listen to CTA. Yeah, well, that's also, that's actually what a lot of people are saying. Mm. Okay, Amani, I want, to, I want us to continue this conversation. So, for me, I'm, it's very calculated where I'm behind the camera. Mm. I tested fame and I tasted the rejection or mm-hmm. opinions that come mm-hmm. with that. Mm-hmm. And honestly speaking, it almost finished me. Yeah. You get mm-hmm. uh, sometimes people don't know you're going through a transition in your own life mm-hmm. and they begin throwing their own opinions even mm-hmm. in this CTA show people mm-hmm. throw their own opinions mm-hmm. without first asking mm-hmm. about the vision about the direction about all of these things mm-hmm. now that's me on a very small scale mm-hmm. even as a musician on a small scale I can't even fathom the kind of backbone and spine that you must have to be to be to even be able to keep standing at that time like how mm. are you able to just do that um there was all that going on and um i just felt um i kept saying i need a break and a break because i just wanted to think and process everything i didn't have time to process a lot of things and even at that point in time i had been um so to speak managing an illness and um I was like okay fine I'm really pushing this you know then at 33 is when I said think about marriage and I said think about okay fine I need to get kids and everything where am I at with this whole thing that I've been managing and um just to take you back around 2006 2007 before I released my album I actually had an, an operation I had a myectomy mm. to remove fibroids mm. but I went through it like <laughs> it was not I was just going to go to the procedure and uh, I was out and um from then i started managing that whole thing yeah but by the time i was getting to around 33 it was intense and it had started affecting my performances so here i am i'm already exhausted from the whole thing and i remember there's this gig we had in uh, in south and sudan Mm. And um I'm I love the way you just throw Africa like it's come on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on stage and uh my manager is trying to beckon me and she's like cut 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 it cut it cut the shot cut shot the performance. And I'm just going to be honest and say maybe there's somebody who's going through the same thing and you know maybe they've gone yeah I had fibroids and I was having excessive bleeding every mm. time I had my periods. So I'm on stage and the more I postponed having the surgery because there were so many they were now affecting me as a mm. person every excuse me every month they were affecting my period they were affecting I had pain so I used to manage it by just taking painkillers some of the agents is like cut it cut it cut it and I'm like what's going on and she takes me back to stage and she's like you're bleeding and I'm like oh and I asked her it's showing she's like you can't go back up And I was like okay she's like I'll explain to them I'll explain to the promoter so that was embarrassing Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. and now those incidences started happening a bit more often it was now like every other month and I had to hide it I could be on my way remember this one meeting I had um, at a restaurant and when I was getting out of the house I was okay and I get to the restaurant and I'm walking and I look down and I'm like what I'm like I hope I pray that's not and I'm looking at my legs I'm like okay I go to the reception and I'm like can I can I use your bathroom and she's like oh and she quickly I think I'm stood what's going on so she didn't even take me at it to the toilet she took me to a proper bathroom mm. <laughs> you know to get myself cleaned up and everything so I was managing now that illness and um knowing that I was due for a major operation if I was to ever have kids because as long as the fibroids mm. were there there was no way I was going to have a child um they had disrupted basically my reproductive system. I mean mm. it was a mess so to speak yeah and yeah So it's now thinking about that and there's all these manenos going on and in the studio ah I'm also just slacking I'm like I don't want to do this and look at me like huh you don't have time you know and I remember I was like you know I need to pull myself together and that's when I did you now the song with uh, Radio and Weasel mm. and um you know Lucas was like this will put you back but then I need to follow it up with other songs 
and I was just not in that place. From Uganda to Kenya, it's a good life thing, this land side of money. From Uganda to Kenya, from Nairobi, Kampala, we come ask them down now. From Uganda to Kenya, it's a good life thing, this land side of money. From Uganda to Kenya. <laughs> I just wasn't. Uh, that was the last piece of strength I had in me. After that, I just didn't have the strength. There was way too much. And for the first time, it got to me. You broke. I broke. And I was like, you just cannot create stories about people that are not true. Mm, I get it. So you broke from the pressure of what people were saying about you. Lies. Just way too everything, many lies. All, everything was that just, was bombarding you everything and of course that included um the pressure i was getting pressure from the studio you need, you need to follow this up this needs to happen when are you signing the second contract when are you doing this there was a lot going on you know mm. we we had uh disagreements about certain things i want to do this i was want to do this we want to do this but you know they had a vision of where we were going and how this was going to happen and you know, there was that friction. And then mm. now here on my other personal side, I'm having my own conflict, my own friction. I want to take out time out. I want to go to hospital and uh, get my second surgery done so I can be fit now to go into the second phase of performing. Question is, do I have that time? I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can't tell the media. The minutes at the Kuski Kiaman, hey, we found something. Let's run with it. Yeah. How are your relationships doing? I'm not, and I'm talking about here friendships, the violas, the everybody else. I mean, um, was that suffering as well? Everything suffered. Your parents, you, your siblings. My parents, siblings, no. Siblings, no. I have now. They okay. haven't sent. Nice. Those other. Those guys are sent from God for sure. Oh. Yeah, my sister, my, my, my sister will beat you up if you try and, <laughs> <laughs> try and mess around with me. Yeah. <laughs> and my brother will be at the back nice. <laughs> following after. I love it. Yeah, those two, yeah, heaven sent. Yeah, so, you know, dealing with all of that and um, work wise, I take responsibility for the slacking, but I just couldn't take it anymore. Mm. I just could not take it anymore. I was reacting and I was like, you guys. I don't see how I'm going back to this industry knowing now what I know. You know, it's easy to work with someone if you do not know what they think about you. Mm. And then having now, you're telling me to do a second album and I have to face this person and God forbid, I just want to cut their throat off. Mm. Yeah. So you quit. I was ready to go. 
And um, in between all of that, I got into a place where I started asking myself, why did I start this in the first place? Why did I get involved in this? Why did I get into music? Because mm. I was like, it's too much. You know, the why determines why you keep going. And I asked myself why. And I remembered it was gospel. Mm, 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 it was God. Mm, mm. And I started really getting back to reading. I wanted some sort of sanity. I didn't want to get bitter about things. I didn't want to be that bitter girl. I didn't want to... I felt like slitting some people's throats, but you know, <laughs> couldn't do that. So, <laughs> well, you create more problems. But um, so I started getting back to, you know, what made me feel happy was listening to Maranatha, Integrity, Christian music. I started reading books from Christian writers that I enjoyed reading. Mm. T.D. Jakes. Joel Austin, all of them. I just started reading. Bishop David Oyedepo, mm. I read, and I read, and I read. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. I couldn't go back. The more I read, the more it just was not happening. Mm. Yeah. And that was it. And I remember, you know, I told Okopa, we're not going to do the second album. I'm leaving and everything. And Francis, you know, was like, it's okay, fine, you go. But even at that, you know, I thought, okay, maybe let me give it. You know, that thing of maybe, mm. let me try. <laughs> let me, maybe, maybe. So I tried to do like two, three songs, but I knew my Is that one, one of them you shot in essay? This one I shot in Nigeria. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, so I tried to do one or two, but still, I wasn't there. It just, my heart was, I, I was, I was done. Mm. Sikira Washington, and this is featuring with Amani. Ah, came one Abuja. They come from the town. when I did the shoot for that particular song and I was What's in, the song? Um, it's called Bonbon mm. and I was in Nigeria and uh, during the shoot I was like I can't do this anymore I can't pretend can't be smiling when I'm not happy I can't be acting like everything is okay when it's not it's time to get out. And I remember when we came to a close, I was like, thank you very much. This is the last one. And that was it. 